Did you know that God never intended for his promises to be vulnerable to your abilities? And Jesus is not depending on what you are or what you possess. He's depending on only one thing. What can I make of you? You see, faith is not just a fact. But the way God manifests himself to you is when you act. Now, I'm going to tell you something, and you probably will find it very difficult to believe. But if you go into the spirit world, you'll understand it. We struggled with our faith for a long time. How many of you honest with Morris and say, Brother Sula, I've struggled with my faith? Well, I have a few people that want to tell the truth. I'm not going to tell you what the rest of you are. Anybody here ever struggle with your faith? I wonder if God could take you past the natural mind tonight and take you by spiritual eyesight if he couldn't take you into breakthrough tonight. Did you know that God never intended for his promises to be vulnerable to your abilities? Now, you just heard a mouthful. God is not struggling with your faith. He just wants you to act on what he said. He prayed the most unusual prayer. Usually, when we have a need, we go to God and we say, Lord, give me, Lord, give me, Lord, give me, Lord, give me, and Lord, give me some more. But it was very strange that he didn't ask God to give him something, but when he came before the Lord, the first thing that he did was recognize who he was calling upon. Did you know that when you pray, you are not praying to the ceiling? Did you know that when you pray, you're not praying to the light bulbs? Did you know that when you open your mouth and you pray, you are praying to God? You are praying to the creator of heaven and earth. Listen to what he says in the sixth verse, first step. He says, O oh Lord, God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? Now, not only did he recognize who he was calling upon, but he recognized that the God that he was calling upon ruled over all the kingdoms. He was
acknowledge the God that had all power and all might. When you open your mouth and when you pray and you call upon God, you're calling upon a God that has all power in heaven and in earth and can do everything. I sought for a man that should make up the hedge. Is it possible that if we come under the anointing of prayer, not, not, not just, I, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Yes. But come into an experience mm -hmm. where our prayers are connected yes. to the promises of God. Yes. There's not one promise of God that can fail. Yeah. And when you pray yes. according to to the promises of God, yes. you know what's going to happen? God is going to explode, yes. answers to prayer yes. in your spirit. That's what we're praying yes. for today. We're praying that the Lord will instill within your spirit faith to reach out and touch the hem of his garment for whatever it is that you have in your life that's a barrier for you today because as God's children, there are no such things as defeats. We only have victory if we'll trust his word. Now there's a mystery in connection with this battle. It's called the mystery of our will. I want every young person in this building Listen very deeply tonight. God never forces man to do anything. When he created us, the Bible says we were created in his image. Look at Mars. Do you think I look like God? Do you think God has my eyes? Do you think God has my ears? How many of you think he has my high cheekbones? How many of you think Morris looks like God? Not one hand. You're a smart crowd. Where is the image of God? It's not in your physical features. The image of God is in your spirit. Everybody say spirit. God created us in his own image and in our spirit. What did he do? He put a God-like characteristic in us. He didn't put any strings on us. He didn't make us puppets. He gave us what is called our free moral will. He gave us the ability to choose whether we will serve him, to choose whether we will obey him. Listen to what Romans 6, 13 says, neither yield ye your members. The mystery of our will, God doesn't domineer us. gave us a free will to choose whether we will yield our members to sin, to unrighteousness, or whether we will yield them in righteousness unto God. He gave us that choice, the power of our will. He gave it to us. God doesn't rule it. The only time God rules your will is when you come to Christ. 
And when you surrender your life to him, that's what salvation and the miracle of salvation is all about. You and I getting off of the throne of our life and saying, Jesus, I surrender to you. You come and you live and you rule and you reign and you dictate. He said to them, when he went into the room, he said, go ye into all the world. Go on. Now, I wouldn't. Would I send these unbelievers? Would I send these no good renegades who walk with him? who saw him open the eyes of the blind, unstop the ears of the deaf, raise the dead. And now he himself appeared to them in his resurrected body and the angels appeared to them and the testimony is the same. They believed not, they believed not, they believed not. And now Jesus comes into that room Go into all the world, preach the gospel. I wouldn't send them. You probably have more faith than I do. But Jesus looked at him, and here's the key. When he saw them, he was not depending on what they were. And Jesus is not depending on what you are or what you possess. He's depending on only one thing. What can I make of you? Amen. Amen. And when I touch your life, and when my anointing comes into your life, when the Holy Spirit which is in me, and that Holy Spirit that raised me from the dead dwells in you, you'll go out and then you'll do these works. Yeah. God never intended for his church that he gave birth to 2,000 years ago, he never intended for it to know one limit. He never intended for it to be deceived by the power of the devil. He never intended for it to fail. He never intended for it to be sick. Just reach up like this. Go. Are you ready for this? Did you know that God fully intended for his body to walk in and possess the same power, the same anointing, the same faith, the same powerful perseverance, the same overcoming ability, the same that his son Jesus Christ had when he was here 2,000 years ago. Are you ready for this? That God is not the product of time. No, 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 no. He's not the product of time. He is the product of eternity.
We need to be reminded of the eternal, everlasting Word of God because you cannot separate God from His Word. It's impossible. God is His Word. Heaven and earth is going to pass away, but the Word of God is never going to pass away. Forever His Word is settled in the heaven. Now, there's a power that you and I deal with, and that's Satan. He would like to rob you tonight of your miracle. But may I tell you something tonight? There's only one way that the devil can rob you of your miracle, and that's if you allow him into your circumstance. Oh, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. If you refuse to allow Satan to come into your circumstance, he can not ever be an obstacle. He has to get into your circumstance. I knew my call from that heavenly experience that I had. Mm. I knew it was to reach the world. But how can one person reach the world? How can Billy Graham reach the world? How can Earl Roberts reach the world? How can Benny Hinn reach the world? It's impossible. The world multiplies too fast. We've got almost 8 billion people on the face of the earth right now. More people are born and raised than die every year. Almost 100 million. We're in a race against time. So in Brazil, yes. that's where something happened. Well, God said, you want to reach the world? He said, I said, yes. He said, I'll give you the key to the closing world. And that's where he taught me all truth is parallel. Mm. I'll give you just a smidge. He Please. said, look at the world. And you'll see there's a cry that's gone up. Africa for the Africans, India for the Indians, Mexico for the Mexicans, South America for the South Americans, Indonesia for the Indonesians. Yankee, go home! You ever hear it? Mm. And God said, what is happening in the world is the national is crying out to rule his own country. They don't want Americans. They don't want the British. They don't want the French. Now God's teaching me all this, a little boy on my back. You want to reach this world? It's to be smart like the world. Mm. He said the key is you raise up the African to reach Africa. You raise up the Indian to reach the Indian. And that's when I came out of that experience. I changed my whole course of doing things. Well, this is when you began training nationals. Nationals, that's right. So that's so, what the turning point. That was the Brazil. defining moment. And that really has set you apart. We've trained five million. Five million. Nationals. nationals. We are going to study now. We'll prepare us for victory. 
and it will also enable us to confront, to defeat the intentions of Satan as he readies himself now to give a massive counterattack against this church that has been engaging in spiritual warfare. The first offensive strategy is to set your mind on victory. Set your mind on victory. Somebody said to me, Brother Shula, how is that possible? Do I have the control over my mind? You better have. It is up to you and I. we are going to bring the mind into submission or whether we are going to allow the mind the freedom to wander to be uncontrolled it's up to us preaching the gospel of salvation healing and deliverance Morris Cirillo ministered anywhere and everywhere from the start, unexpectedly large crowds gathered. Altar calls were massive. The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. Proof of the presence of God, the power of Jesus to save and to heal, and the call on Morris's life. But he was not content. It wasn't just Americans that needed Jesus. Morris was called to the world. In 1955, not knowing evangelistic crusades were illegal in Greece, Morris flew to Athens for his first international crusade met with the impossible, he did what has since become his standard lifelong practice. He locked himself in his hotel room and prayed until God gave the victory. Ten days later, a stranger appeared at his door. Good morning, she said. My husband is the president of the Bank of Athens. I am here to help you get the permits you need. From all over Greece, they came, packing an Athens theater to hear the young evangelist proclaim, I greet you today in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Widespread worldwide acclaim followed, then preceded every appearance Morris made. In Haiti, voodoo witch doctors tried to kill him, but were countered by God's protective power. In the Far East, False gods entrapping people in Buddhism, Shintoism, Hinduism, and other shackling beliefs fell to the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. He is alive! What's up, guys? Happy New Year. And remember, we have many amazing preachers in our channel. I want to really recommend it to you to watch. We have Pastor Bill Johnson, Heinrich Bonke, Billy Graham, and also in this channel, we want to really give the opportunity to you to receive spiritual blessings, breakthroughs, knowledge from preachers around the world. If you don't know, I want to recommend to you, like Pastor Satish Kumar, a pastor of over 100,000 people in India, Brother Young, David Jung Shu, Bishop Dagwood Mills, and I'm sure you're going to be blessed.